So, so you, uh, when did, so is that when the, you moved the shop after the, um, so, for, so what happened was, um, <clears throat> this is the carousel. The famous Santa Clara carousel. Corey Hen. Look at that. It has a plaque right there. I'm so happy to see that. Dude, then he starts running. And he's like, ah, I got a job right here. I don't know if they're ever referred to, but in the script, they were referred to as the surf Nazi. It's time to go see Joe. I'm excited to go see, uh, go see Joe at the Atlanta. I'm Jameson Newlander. I played Alan Frog, one of the Frog Brothers, in the 1987 cult classic movie, The Lost Boys. That's me with Corey Feldman. By the time The Lost Boys came out, we all realized that we were taking a bit of a right turn for the vampire genre on an unexpected scenic detour through Neverland. Now, more than 35 years later, I'm on a mission to find and rediscover all the lost locations that went into making this amazingly cool movie. Welcome to Jameson Newlander's Lost Locations, Searching for the Lost Boys. So uh, I don't know if you recognize where we are now, but um, Michael and Sam walking through here. Michael hot on the trail of this beautiful woman, or about to, not to really interact with Star. And he says to Haim, he says to Haim, he says, "Don't you have anything better to do?" And Haim looks, realizes where he is, that he's in front of the comic book store, and he says, "Yeah, actually, I do." And he comes in to see us, but guess what? There's no comic book store here. <laughs> A little bit of movie magic. So we're here at the location of the original location of Atlantis Fantasy World, which was used in the filming of the Lost Boys, of course. Now, you know, this one thing about the comic book store is that that's where I spent most of my time because, you know, that's where my big scenes were. So I really got to know it, you know, and here it is. <laughs> so many people have come by and said, no, this is too small a space. It couldn't have fit in Right, here. that's what it seems like, yeah. Because the illusion was, it was an old family grocery store at its heyday, the Landis and Tui Market. Uh -huh. And they would accordion the doors out and roll the produce out onto the sidewalk. Oh, yeah, right that's here. right. I remember the accordion doors. Right, door. okay. Yeah. Well, those accordion doors would have meant too much exposure for our product, right, so right, we right. nailed them all shut except for one door. And when the director, Joel Schumacher, found out they would accordion out. They ripped out all the nails. <laughs> now, they hmm. built their fake set. They built the fake wall right here. Right. All that was street. right here, right? Right here. So what was street. right here? Um, the wall was in the gutter, and then Laughing Sal was about yeah, right yeah, here. Yeah, that's So when true, people yeah. walked by, it looked yeah. like it. Right here, they built a fake exterior that said Fantasy World. Yeah. And we have a picture of that on the website, on our website. It's supposed to be um, like as if you're under that thing in the on the boardwalk. Right, or, uh, but they yeah. never used that. For some reason, they built that exterior. It was never in the film. Well, you know, when we first started the business, this was just a derelict store. It had been the... the and look at it now. Well, I was going to say, <laughs> it had been the grocery store. Uh -huh. And then in the 50s, um, there was a flood here in town. And... Um, this just can't catch a break. This, Floods, this, I was going to say, know. let me tell you, we opened the day after Thanksgiving in 76, and then the 89 earthquake happened in October. So it damaged down the street here. It was There's there's books in the bookshops and the yeah. libraries about the, de the devastation. Like you could see it where there are like cracks in oh, the street. Oh, okay. Stuff? So what happened? The front part of the store was wooden, and it did what it was supposed know, to yeah. do. It, it gave. The back part of the store was unreinforced. Lathe, lathe and mace, uh, uh, um, you know, stucco and lathe, that got plaster and stuff. So after the earthquake, the back part of the store got red tagged. The front part that we were in, we were okay. But they told the landlord, well, look, the back part has to come down, so you have a choice. You can take it down yourself at your own expense, or FEMA will take down the whole building. And they said what we would have done, and it free. So they said, okay, fine. So they took a, a tractor, and it just came right through the front door and took oh, the whole man. place down. There's pictures we have someplace. I would love to see those pictures. I would love to see it, too, if I can find them. I've been looking yeah. for them. Uh, there's a tractor sitting on a pile of rubble 
sitting here. Yeah. I, I just feel like it's, maybe it's another possibility of a. Oh, we built something Who there, knows? Something. Like those doors and stuff. Is that all gone? The, the, yeah. The wooden doors. Yeah. That would have been cool to like I know. direct that for a second. You know? I know. That's uh, there's a lot of changes as you would imagine in 37 years. Uh, some things yeah, haven't changed. <laughs> yeah, I've been interviewed quite a lot by fans and their fan websites and things totally. where we describe some of this stuff. But I've never done it right here. Yeah, I know that's. And a, this that's is cool this thing. is really cool. I had auditioned for the part of the comic book store owner, and I didn't get it because I didn't look burned out enough. Go, <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. That, what's my job? Sit here and don't yeah. move. That's like you it. look like a pinball pinball machine that's player. That's it. Well, you know. And the other thing that's really crazy was I had. I'm also a musician, as you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Played and sang for years in this town. And I was hired to play for the installation of the Chamber of Commerce officers at Scotts Valley, which is about six miles out of town here. Mm -hmm. The Saturday that um, uh, my scene, my pinball machine, machine my pinball, pinball machine pinball scene. Machine. You say that three times. <laughs> Wait, yeah, really, I haven't had a thing to drink. Um, that was the night I had to sing for Scotts Valley. So... You know, we're shooting all day, and I'm standing sideways to the machine, and I'm watching it, you know, and I snuck in my line. Oh, did you see that? Like, it ripped me off, you know? You're not oh, supposed nice. to say anything without a SAG card. Oh, 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 oh. Did you see that? So if you crank the volume, you can hear me stick a line into this movie, right? SAG card for that. I should have. So, they, we break, and it's getting close to, I don't know, 6, six o'clock or something. And I turned to my partner, Jim, and I said, i got to go do this gig. He says, okay, so I take off. Well, the uh, the AD was Bill Beasley, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So when they were ready to do the second take, he turns to Jim and says, where's Joe? And he said, Joe's gone. He had a gig. And Bill's face, as Jim told okay. me, just went, oh, my God. Because when you're an extra, you're supposed to be there right. all day, yeah, right? Yeah, totally. Nobody told Joel. They did the shoot. But the scene that they used, had me in it, ah, that's so I didn't end up on the cutting room floor. Yeah, that would have been a bummer, if all, you, all that, and then because you had the gig, you weren't in the movie. Uh, yeah, and cool. those two actors that played your parents were not actors; they were locals. That's what I heard. Yeah, that's, yes. yeah. So they were not actors in makeup; they were locals who looked like that, and the they full, saw them. Uh, all, what they were wearing hippie. was their everyday Santa Cruz wow. hippie. They said, you two, come over here and sit there. That's really, you saw it happen? You uh, saw him? Uh, exactly. Hey, uh, Will, yeah, Jameson. What's up, brother? <laughs> I know, yeah, obviously. So listen, um, I just came from Feldman's. Awesome to see him, by the way. He's looking really cool, and really, it was just, it was just great to catch up. It was really cool. Um, he's doing great. Uh, and heartbroken, also. I mean, I'm so, sure he is. But, um, so he, um, but the thing is, he's not... We talked about coming on the show, and he's excited about the show. He, he saw the show. He's really digging it, and he, he's excited about it. Um, but he's like, you know, he, he's got his thing. That's yeah, that's what brother. you said, right? He's got his tour. He's got things he's, like, really kind of busting on right now, and he wants to do it right. So um, right now, you know, he's not really able to come onto this show, onto the comic book store show, which is cool. I totally respect that, but I do think I want to get something, like, more exciting, more interesting about it and I'm wondering if maybe we maybe we try and find the dad that we try and find the frog dad yeah because you right Joe had a kind of line on on right on the, that he, right selling empathy yeah right exactly so yeah what do you think do you think we should try and find the frog dad for this show so, nobody was able to find the frog parents. Even Paul Davis, who was known for finding almost everybody else for the book, and he got all these great interviews from people, he couldn't find them. It's, it's sort of like they had disappeared back into Santa Cruz. And hats off to our producer, Will Fredericks, who did a great job based on a tip from the actual comic book store owner, Joe. And uh, he found Barr, who was the frog dad, and he was willing to meet and talk, and we had a great lunch, and it was just great catching up. Like you were in a line out here or something like that, and they grabbed you? Yeah, it was at the Holiday Inn. Ah, yeah, that's where we were staying, which is now the Paradox, right? Now the Paradox, yeah. correct. Um, yeah, there was a, a little thing in the paper, a uh, casting call for extras, um, hippie-looking, long-haired people, and I was like, oh, well, I have long hair. <laughs> And I was in line with probably a hundred people, and one of Julie Bully's assistants came out and grabbed me. 
<laughs> he said, come with me. <laughs> like, really? You. So, yeah, we went inside and they said, look, um, we want you to come back in a couple of hours and we're going to like film you and um, because we're thinking of like there's this part you might get. So I went, okay, cool. And I went and came back and and then they, they said, you know, we don't really want you for that part, but there's this other part. Um, and that's so I ended up sitting up on the counter asleep over there. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, right, right about there, right? <laughs> right over there. Yeah, it's like I can, I can picture you guys right yeah, there. Yeah, me and Jane are up on the counter. Yeah. Leaning up against the TV set, uh -huh. and it's dark. You know, the place was dark. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. was. And they had all that smoke. You know, it was. It got yeah. really smoky. You well, know. they they had a smoke machine. I remember that. But yeah, like, there's that one guy, and he was like, <laughs> like, and it. When you had that line, how many takes did you take of? Did you get probably of your line? three or four? And yeah. I and they were all exactly the same. I couldn't change it. It was like I was so self-conscious. Like I mean, it's so self-conscious. Yeah, I, you know, even though I mean, I, I've done a bunch of movies, and it's still when that camera rolls, it, it's nerve-wracking. Of course, I have a, um, a biased view, but I think outside of that biased view, just objectively looking at it, it's a really good movie. I felt the same thing when I when I finally could get myself out of it and not look at my <clears throat> performance and be like, oh no, I missed that moment or whatever, and I was able to just step back and be like, yeah, it, it's a really good movie. Yeah. Yeah, the elements are amazing, like what came together there. Um, yeah, you know, and like Michael Chapman, you know. Michael Chapman. Right. And yeah. Joel Schumacher. Yeah. And everybody. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, it's well done. It's beautiful. Yeah. The music is Yeah, amazing. the music. I know. That, that's what I, that's what I saw, what I saw of it first was the music or heard of it, right? I mean, because it came out and you're like, whoa, I didn't expect this. You know? Right, yeah. yeah. And, you, and your line. Uh, I, hey, I had one syllable. Hey. You know, and it was like. The, um, the surf Nazis were stealing. Right, they were stealing the stuff over here. here. It was like yeah, a little here rack and over running here. Running that way. Yeah. And you guys were like, hey, hey, yeah. running after them. And, and I think like, my hey, maybe Feldman's hey got in the movie, but my hey definitely got in the movie. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yours did. Mine is not there. And for good reason. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, one thing too is that we were talking about, about the. Um, the fact that you felt like there was a kind of a father father son connection oh yeah uh, together. No, totally look i wore this jacket in your honor <laughs> that's awesome no i wear this jacket every day but i was thinking about it <laughs> well even better yeah you know, this is cool that yeah when i saw you it was like i was thinking like wow that guy really could be my son which is trippy because like as you said the the movie's about family and, and stuff and Yet another thing that I that is sort of un unexpected. I'd even think about that um, before talking to you. That and I, I mean, I certainly had like I remember connecting with you guys really well and probably feeling pretty. You know, it's funny how movies are. Like w w you were my parents in it, and I, I, I felt that a little bit. You know what yeah. I mean? Mm -hmm. So, you know. Wow. And Jane. So did you, you didn't you weren't friends with Jane? We talked about that a little I, bit. I did not know her. Um, In some way, I went over to their house because they just lived in Beach Flats, which is not far from here. Really? Um, Interesting. And you know, seven kids. And, she has seven kids. And, and the kids are in the movie. Uh, are so, they? Yeah, they're in the sh opening shots when it shows like the real people of Santa Cruz. They're like that's pretty kind of cool. Punky. Um, yeah. Uh, and I, you know, I went and maybe had dinner with them or something. Um, but like like I, after the sometime after the movie or recent I mean before she died it wasn't recent it was I mean, like right yeah. around the time of the movie oh yeah um, and that was it no other contact ever and I didn't know even what had happened with her until Will asked yeah and I went online and there's her obituary oh. and so at long last the frog dad far of Santa Cruz once a lost boy now. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what this is? This is the boardwalk of Santa Cruz and also the boardwalk of Santa Carla. That's it. It came in from the, you know, at the beginning of the movie. We came in dun, 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 like that. Anyway, listen, it's all peaceful and lovely, but in about an hour and a half, it's going to be packed because we're going to be over at Atlanta's Fantasy World on Cedar Street. Come by. We're going to be signing autographs, talking about the movie and meet and greet and taking pictures and everything like that. Come on by.
Hey, 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 hey. Sorry about that. I wanted to make you nervous. <laughs> It's pretty L.A. time. Exactly. Yeah. I wanted to give you a taste of what it's like, because Feldman is usually uh, the one who's late. Say, you know? What's going on? You wake on, this guys? whole time? You all the way from Canada. Awesome. Awesome. Nice. You see your sheet. So, um, I bought this one for me yesterday. Right. That's why it's not checked out, but I got a bunch no, of stuff. That's, there. that's why it's the first one. You see this, you got. Is that the original? So it's, it's not the original, but it does have significance because. So. I, this is my dad's army jacket. Oh, nice! And so when we went to the when I went to the audition, you see, there's blue in there. When we went to the audition, they were like, "We want you to be clean cut to military." They're sort of considering making this character like military. Right? So my my dad cracked this out. I wore it, and Joel loved it. You know, he loved the dice on the sleeve and everything, and that's why he, uh, you know, you can see it. Wait, where's the? Yeah. I, I trust me. Oh yeah, you got it. You got the dice. You know the story about this? This was a six issue series that was written, it was supposed to be the sequel of the movie, um, which they didn't do, which they should have done. The writer, Tim Seeley, lived in Chicago, and for our 40th anniversary, we flew him and his wife here to the store for a signing. He signed the first two issues because that was all that was in print at the time. Then he went back home, finished writing the rest of the series, and in the last book, he had the uh, vampires kill me off in the book. <laughs> And uh, which is kind of an honor, but they had me as a World War One vet, and my era was Vietnam, so eh, you know, I was a little older than I was supposed to be, but that's okay. So I'm clearly not that old. So, so anyway, so um, so they shot the movie, as you know, three days, three Saturdays. They built the set Friday, shot on Saturday, tore down on Sunday. Those were my days, those were like my big days. Those were your big days, the three Saturdays, right? Well, the third Saturday, they shot all day a scene that never made it in the film. The idea was somebody was stealing a comic, and Feldman reaches down and grabs a slingshot and blows the guy's ear off. And shot it all day and never made it into the film. Now, I've always said, I don't know if it was because it just didn't work as an effect or whether it was too gruesome. So, what's your take on that? So, first of all, that's cool that I didn't, there's an element of that that I didn't know about. That, that's pretty cool. The piece I knew about is, or the, that I maybe expected or whatever, is that. So, it was originally a gun, yeah, that's why I was, I had and so that the frogs the they pulled out a gun, <laughs> and it made sense in terms of their defending the shop. Yeah, right. But so Joel was really not adamant about, adamant about the gun. Yeah, he didn't want the, the kid. Like, oh, we're we're be, 15 years old pulling a gun. Right, right. Now, right. Which I think is great um, that he that he had that foresight to know that. So they changed it to the slingshot. And then I think the thing is just kind of dumb. Right. It's just kind of, yeah. you know, I got a call from a guy in England who was writing the book, and he interviewed me for an hour. Yeah. Then I told him that story. And I got a call from him a few weeks later. He was going through all the stills that he had from the film, and he had a still of you and Feldman with the slingshot. Oh, there's those captures. And, and he said, if I hadn't talked to you, I wouldn't know what this is all about. Because it So it's buried yeah. in the book somewhere, and I don't have a copy of the book to show you. Because they didn't yeah, send me well, one. we got to get you the book. Because, we'll uh, get a book. Paul, he's a good guy. He, well, he, Paul's he a good guy. I, yeah, yeah, and I've, I've spoken with Paul a few times. But in any case, here we are. Totally, totally. Now I gotta see that. Because the thing is that these these chats are so good. Oh, wow, so, that's so cool. It's, yeah, it looks that. so much like him. It does. Yeah, yeah. I miss that guy. I think I friended you. Okay, it could be what? What's your name? And I had posted on like one of our event pages or whatever, and I don't know if it was actually you who asked yeah. if I was coming today. So I'm saying yes. I he could have been. I, I could look at my phone. No, he's got my phone. He's got me, your so. phone. <laughs> <laughs> here's, my, here's my book. Have you seen this book? Yeah, yeah. We were talking about this it's book. It's such yeah. a good book. In fact, G stole my G Tom Max stole my book. That's claim to fame. Really? Yeah. I mean, that's kind of cool to say though. Yeah.
Yeah, that's great. That's great. Really hard. That's great. Yeah. Awesome. You know what I noticed about this shot as I had this is that everyone's looking oh, yeah, into the camera except for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it makes me great. <laughs> what did you bring to get signed that was the first one? Oh, look at that. Wow. Dude. That's cool. That is cool. I've never seen anything like that. No, I got a custom. That makes sense because I have never seen anything. Yeah. It's awesome. Thank you. So being here, does this feel like it a little bit? Should we, should we no. check out the... Not at all. But like the, it's the same it's kind of so counters. Right? It's the same know, kind of counters. I mean, it is That's so awesome. different because look how bright it is in here. And right, right. Colorful. And you know, the other place was dark. And I remember on in the, in the church scene, I, I was well, into that's this. That's one of the funniest scenes. Right. Like, there are so many scenes that are just laugh out loud funny in yeah. the movie, and that's one of them. All these people up there, sure. like, looking at you guys, like, uh, but, uh, what's yeah. happening yeah. here? And do you remember that guy? Remember Jack? That he was he was our teacher, and he's the one who ended up getting the job as the priest, getting the, the role as the priest. Oh. Yeah. 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 He was quite. Yeah. Very much looked like a looked like a priest. Or, you know. Very much. Yeah. yeah. Well, that it depends. It depends if Jameson's going to bring me around, you know. Hey, hey, everybody. Too bad we don't have steaks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So uh, we just had a, what was, I think, an incredibly successful signing here. Everybody seemed so psyched. We had some great conversations, had a lot of fun. And he spent quality time with every single person. Yeah. He was a little. <laughs> it was perfect. Right. Thanks. Really, Thanks. Really it's was just us. great to be here. Thank yeah. you, Joe. Next year we'll do it again? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's do it again. <laughs> All right, so this is uh, Laughing Stop. You can see the laughing style. So uh, apparently, this is what was in front of the comic book store. It was part. It was something they put there and made part of the set. I don't really remember it that well because they didn't get that much of it. But the thing about it is that as I look at the face, I'm starting to see that I do kind of remember it because it's really freaking me out. Laughing style is pretty freaky. It's like, look, it's just like it's slapping me, like um, scary stuff. So the thing I realized in doing this show is that the comic book store is truly lost. We're never going to get it back. It was knocked down before anybody really realized its significance. Well, so that made me want to focus on what's still standing, the Poganip. So let's focus on that and try and get that saved before it gets knocked down, before it's lost. This is where Kifu was with his lost boys, and they were there. Because this part of the boardwalk is significant for two main reasons. Number one is the, the small reason is that me and Corey Feldman, and maybe even Corey Hayne, oh no, he was part of the scene. We are here at the Two Club. 
Club. Why we come to Choo Choo Tilt Tube Club on Friday night in San Diego. So right here, this is right next to the boardwalk, right next to the ocean. And this bridge... You you lead the interview and I follow your lead. Yeah, that's Is that good. It? That's good, yeah. I mean, that's good because... I'm forward, so. <laughs> so, wait, what would it... 